The story is told in Luke 15 of a man who had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. I grew up in church and I was an active member of the Bible club, but I walked away from all of that and became heavily involved with drugs and alcohol. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. I left home, traveling from state to state, just trying to make it and find a, a home for, you know, for myself. It hurts me to see you this way. I can't sleep. I'm lying awake, wondering what you're battling tonight. In the distant land, the son wasted all his money on wild living. I was drinking 24/7, sometimes days at a time, and I didn't. Uh, I, didn't, I thought I could handle it, and I didn't care whether I lived or died at the end. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. I lost my apartment, and I lost my car, and my friends, and everything went completely downhill from there. persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. When I was living on the streets, I was getting beat up, I was getting molested, I was getting robbed. I found sanctuary inside of a portable toilet. I was able to get inside, shut the door, lock it, and feel some sense of safety. That's how bad it got. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything. Didn't know where the next meal was coming from. At my age, I just couldn't believe I'd get in a situation like this. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here, I am dying of hunger. I had to eat outdoors, and, and the weather was freezing cold. I knew I needed some help because I had lost so much weight, and. The only thing I could do was seek out shelters. So um, that's what I did. He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. I got to a point where I knew I needed help and I needed to come back home, so I came back to the mission here, where I know I have, where my friends are and my support is. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. When I came through the door, I felt that it was a sense of family and unity here. Um, since I've been here, it's been nothing but support and love and teaching me all about what the Bible is. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. It was a humbling experience, but I chose to do the program and found a way to trust God again. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe to the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger, sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. Because of the Union Gospel Mission, 
to such a wonderful organization, I wouldn't be where I am today emotionally, physically, or spiritually. This son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so the party began. Because of the programs, because of the staff of the Union Gospel Mission, today I have an opportunity to give back, to become a contributing member of society. It's phenomenal what the Union Gospel Mission has done for me. It's given me the opportunity to grow up, to take responsibility for my recovery and for my future. I've been through so much in my life, but now I am home, just nothing but love and support.